The TNE procedure stands for transnasal esophagoscopy, and it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a scope that goes through the nose, transnasal, and looks at the esophagus, so it's esophagoscopy. The real advantage to the TNE is the fact that it can be done in the office, so that way it's a clinic visit. The patient doesn't have to worry about scheduling a lot of time off work, doesn't have to worry about having a driver come with them because they're going to be you know, feeling a little bit groggy from a general anesthetic. They can drive themselves in, drive themselves out. You know, they, they can go out to dinner that night if they want to. And we, most of the time when we're considering a TNE is when the patient has some kind of throat symptomatology or esophageal symptomatology that suggests there may be either reflux or some other problem with the swallowing system. So we'll see a patient in clinic. They'll come in with their initial complaint and tell us what's bothering them and then we'll do our usual head and neck exam at that point in time. Look in the mouth, look in the nose, look in the ears. Generally in my clinic when we look in the uh, patient's throat for the first time we use a very short uh, scope that goes through the nose. It only looks as far as the, the mid portion of the throat but it gives us an idea of the voice box and what it's doing but it'll give us an idea of how well a patient will tolerate the TNE. So the patient tolerates, which most patients, even down to age four, tolerate the flexible scope through the nose relatively well. Then they'll tolerate the TNE fairly well. When we were to tell the patient ahead of time not to eat anything uh, at least four hours before the procedure, it's not that they're going to get sick, but the food in there will cover up the skin lining and we won't be able to see. So if there's food there, there's no sense in doing the procedure. Most of the complaints we get from patients about the procedure have to do with the numbing. And it's not that the numbing hurts, it's that the numbing makes you feel really weird in the throat. And we warn patients about that. It makes your throat feel very thick and makes you feel like you're not swallowing even though you are. And that's somewhat bothersome. And so we spray the nose, have a little lozenge the patient sucks on, and then there's a liquid they drink. That's it. That's all for the numbing. And that will numb things very, very well. The patients sometimes are numbed in a separate exam room. They'll get the numbing and it's numbing they've had before. They're brought into our TNE room, which is a larger exam room. It has a chair and it has right next to it a computer tower where there's a computer monitor on the front and there's a whole bunch of boxes that have um, lights on it and computer equipment and all sorts of things like that. On the other side will be just a regular exam cabinet that has a, sh a flat top and shelves that we can set things on. Like if we need to take a biopsy, we'll have the little biopsy containers or the little biopsy wire that we use. And then right above that is a separate monitor that shows exactly what the exam is doing. So we can see a monitor, the exam monitors both on the left and the right of the patient that will be showing the same thing. Then we'll bring the scope in. Um, the scope has a large base to it that's plugged into the computer and then a, there's a cable that plugs into the side of that base that carries water for irrigation and there's a little hose that plugs in the side of that base that carries the suction that we need. Now, the hose that carries the water for irrigation is also one that pumps in a little bit of air. We'll test that out right before we use it. All equipment is always tested before we put it in the person. So the person will actually see us testing it in a little basin of water it's sterile water and we'll test all those ports, all the functions of that scope, make sure it's working appropriately before we use it. The worst thing that you imagine happening is if you, someone puts a scope in and you and finds out it doesn't work. We test it before it ever goes in the body. So we know it's working before you do it. Then the scope is placed through the nose, the side that's numbed, and the person just breathes through their nose as the scope's going in. We'll tell them where it is in the nose. They'll feel it. We'll say we're going through the nose. We're about ready to come around the corner at the back of the nose. And now we're in the throat. And then once I'm in there, I'll have a good view of the voice box. I'll have the person say E so I can see their vocal cords move and have them breathe so I can see the vocal cords move very well um, and get a good view of what's going on with their throat. Then I'll advance the scope a little bit further and it'll get to the point where it's right above their swallowing tube. At that point, we may have them look down like they're looking at their belly button, head and all, we'll look forward and ask them to swallow hard. When they swallow hard, that scope will then go into the food pipe. Sometimes it takes a couple swallows. Most patients can do it in one or two swallows, goes in. After it's in the food pipe, then the patient just sits back and rides with the rest of the exam. We'll advance the scope as we're going on down. They'll be using a little bit of air, puffing in there to to stretch out that esophagus so we can see things. 
we get down to the bottom of the esophagus, we'll look at the, the bottom part of the esophagus where it joins with the stomach. That's the area where most cancers form. So we want to get a good view of that. We may spend a few seconds just really examining that area. Then we'll advance that scope into the stomach, take a quick look around in the stomach. Then if there are biopsies done, we'll do it after that stomach view. We'll do our biopsies. And what will happen with that is we'll, the scope will stay in the area we want to biopsy. And then my assistant will bring out the little biopsy wire, which feeds into the scope itself. So the patient never feels it. It goes inside the scope and follows the scope all the way down, then pokes out at the very end of the scope where I can see it through the TV monitors. And then we'll take our little biopsies from that area. We'll take the wire out for each time there's a biopsy, put it in the biopsy cup, and then put the wire back in for each one. Usually I take about three biopsies. Once that's complete, We'll slowly bring the scope out, look at everything again, make sure there wasn't anything that was missed when we were going on in, then the scope's removed from the nose, then we're done. The scope is removed, taken out of the computer monitor, removed from the room. At that point in time, I save the exam. Once it's saved, then I'll turn the chair so the, the patient, the, the person who's sitting there can see. Everyone in the room is family there. They can all come up and see, and we'll go over the exam together. I'll play it back and we'll, I can point out the different points that we saw, what's good, what's not good, you know, what we saw, what we were looking for, what we actually experienced, and then answer any questions at that point, and then you're done.